Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well today. Uh, I mentioned in a recent newsletter that I, uh, that I sent out about some of the things I want to do in terms of my videos and the instruction that I provide here uh, this year. And one of the things is really talking about concepts and ideas and kind of working through uh, stuff in a photo instead of just like, you know, move this slider for this or move that slider for that. I kind of want to be a little bit more holistic and give a better uh, approach, hopefully, uh, that gives you better results. And so that's what I'm working on today. And by the way, if you haven't joined my newsletter, I send it out about once a week, sometimes every two weeks. You can get it uh, or join it at the link below. And I include some preset packs for Luminar Neo and some other things as well for free for anyone that's on my newsletter. Now, today I'm on uh, this photo here in Luminar Neo. And I want to talk about how, really, regardless of your skill level, there are a few things you can do to any photo and some things to think about that are going to really help you get a really, I think, a beautiful edit at the end. And frankly, these ideas and the things I'm doing are fairly consistent regardless of the app that you're using. I'm, of course, in Luminar Neo, as you can see. The only thing I've done so far is I straighten the photo a little bit, but I'm going to start out in Develop Raw. And the first thing I like to talk about is the idea of applying edits globally, that is, across the entire photo, before I do anything else. And for me, that's always starting in Develop Raw. Now, there's a whole lot in Develop Raw, and it would probably take several videos to cover all of it. But uh, one of the nice things to look at are camera profiles. I'm going to just stick with the Luminar default, uh, default profile here, but I'm gonna, uh, I'll often go experiment with camera profiles because they could give you kind of alternative interpretation of the raw data when you're in a raw file. By the way, you're only going to have those profiles if you have a raw file. But uh, it's a great way to look because it could provide a little bit of a shortcut to your edit. One of the things I like to do, I start in Develop Raw and I'm thinking globally, like what am I, what am I going to do that's going to impact the entire photo? I also like to look at the histogram when I do this. As you can see, it's really bunched up at the left, which means it's really dark. Hey, no surprise, it's a nighttime shot. This was six seconds at F18. That's London, of course, and uh, it's too dark. So the first thing I want to do is I'm thinking about the light, uh, and I go about a half a stop here in terms of increasing the exposure. Now that's going to, uh, again, it's a global edit, and so by definition, it's impacting, of course, the entire photo. Now the highlights, uh, the light streaks on, that was a double-decker bus that passed. The light streaks are fine, but the highlights inside of the clock face here, uh, what we call Big Ben, uh, that is um, uh, needs to be adjusted. So I'm going to pull the highlights down all the way. And while that will impact the brightness of these here, I don't think it's a big deal in terms of the overall look of the photo. I'm going to give it a slight bump in shadows. Uh, I'm going to give it a slight bump in uh, blacks and a slight reduction in the whites. Again, this is just balancing the overall look of the light in the photo. When I'm in Develop Raw, I'm doing some of the basic things like camera profiles. I might use some things down here like uh, optics or transform to slightly adjust the photo, but I'm primarily thinking about the light. Now the temperature and tint are fine. Uh, I tend to skip saturation here. If I use vibrance, I'll use it kind of sparingly. So let's call it a seven. And I like to use a little bit of sharpening as well. Let's say a 18, 20, somewhere in there. The only other thing I really want to do is get into transform. And uh, I would normally click on auto distortion correction, but in doing so, I don't know. I, I didn't really feel like it did much for me. I'm going to leave that off, although I often will check on that when I'm using um, a raw file here. Uh, but I'm going to look at transform. And with the verticals, I, I'm actually going to scoot the vertical to the right. So if you see what I'm doing, I'm basically pulling the bottom of the photo forward, right? Now I've gone way too far. I'm doing that as an example. But I think I'm going to go about a 1. And so there it is at 0. And then if I pull it to a 1, you can see that slightly pulls the bottom of the clock tower there toward me and it gives it a little bit straighter look and I think a little bit better overall look. Also, all this stuff down here in the bottom, which we're going to accentuate in a couple of minutes, uh, is a little bit closer. I just feel like it gives you a little bit better feel overall for the photo. Uh, so before and after. Now I do see some spots in the sky. I'm going to go ahead and click on erase and remove dust spots and get rid of those. Now the other thing I like to do when I'm thinking about the light and making my early global adjustments is go into super contrast. And I will admit that um, this is pretty much always an experimental thing for me where I'm just kind of playing around with different aspects uh, here, the different tonal areas, and just trying to see what might look good and what might look uh, not so good. So I'm going to go ahead and just 
go about maybe about like that. It's, it's not a big change. In fact, if you look at the before and after, you can probably hardly even tell. The point is, I want to go in and play with the light a little bit from a global standpoint, adjusting the entire photo. And that's really part one of my editing. And this is kind of a three-part approach. But part one is looking at the light and making global adjustments, which I just did with Develop Raw and then Super Contrast. So now having done that, I'm going to jump into the second part, which is multiple tools and multiple things, but it's around the idea of making local adjustments. So first section is global. Now I'm jumping in and doing more local adjustments. Now the first one that I do is I'm going to go play with that clock face and I'm going to get a radial gradient and I'm just going to drop that right in the center of the clock, maybe something about like that. And then I'm going to go into the adjustments. I'm going to pull the exposure down. I'm going to go about negative one there. I'm actually going to play with the contrast. I ended up going into the mid 50s on that. And the highlights came down as well. That goes down about a, a low 40. And while I'm at it, I'm going to actually drop the whites. And that comes down pretty significantly, something about like that. And because it's kind of a yellowy orange, I'm going to actually give it a slight bump in temperature, just like a one. Now, you may look at it and think it's not significantly different, but let me show you the before and the after. Just a little bit better visibility into that clock face. And I will admit, F18 for six seconds, probably a little bit too much. It got a little bit too bright. And you can see still in the histogram, there's a slight bit of just going off the, uh, the right-hand side, and that's part of that. In other words, it's not fully recoverable, but I still think it looks better than it did before. And that's the first thing I want to do with my local adjustment. Now I close develop and I'm going to open it again because the other thing I like to do is, and what I want to do is work on this foreground. In this case, I'm going to get a linear gradient and I want to come over here and I want to create a little bit of accent in that foreground area in that street. Something about like that. And what I want to do is that linear gradient is in place. And by the way, uh, one of the key skills is masking. Learning how to mask in any product, in this case in Luminar Neo, incredibly important to help you do these local adjustments because by definition they're called local because they're targeted and specific to little parts or potentially big parts of a photo but they're in specific parts and they're not across the entire photo the way you do that is with masking and shameless plug i have an entire masking masterclass available for luminar neo as well that i sell on my website if you want to check that out um, but i use that linear gradient to kind of get that foreground highlighted now that i've added the a bump in exposure, I'm actually going to drag the contrast to the right because one of the things I want to do is really make the dark part kind of dark, but make the white of the different text and that sort of thing, like this little bicycle icon. I want those things to pop a little bit more. It's pretty easy to do with the various tools here. So shadows are coming down about a negative 20 and blacks are going to come down like a mid 30s, maybe something about like that but the whites are gonna come up pretty significantly, so maybe like mid 60s. And so now if you look at that section uh, in the bottom, kind of this bottom right corner, there it is before, quite a bit flatter, doesn't really have much emphasis or pop, and now it looks a lot better. In fact, I could probably lift the highlights too if I wanted to, uh, and just kind of get a little bit more, maybe a little bit more whites as well. All I'm trying to do is make that section stand out because for me, that's the first line that kind of leads your eye into the photo. I feel like it starts right over here around bus lane and around this bicycle icon and kind of follows that and this bus blur is coming, kind of leading you to Big Ben. So I want to highlight that. And that's a key thing about local adjustments is that with masks and with different tools, you're picking out parts of a photo that you're creating emphasis around. And a lot of that is done with the use of light uh, and of course with mass to make it uh, sort of contained in a certain area. But that's why I think it's very, very important. Now, another thing I want to do is kind of play with the sky. And you might think, oh, that's easy. Just go into develop gym and get a sky AI and let it find the mask. And yes, that does work, but I'm not going to do it that way. I'm actually going to go into color. If you look at the sky, it's all blue. And so what I can do is go into color, go into HSL, and go into luminance. And what I want to do is just lift the luminance of the blue a little bit. So maybe like in the 20s. And all that's going to do is effectively impact the sky because there's not really much else that's blue in the photo. So if you look at the before and the after, I just took the luminance of the blue channel and the blue only and lifted that to brighten it up because I wanted the sky to be a little bit brighter. So yes, that's a color adjustment, but in reality, I didn't do anything with color. I just used the blue channel and increased the brightness of the blue. So I consider that a local adjustment around light 
even though it was done with the color tool. I hope that makes sense. Uh, but it's just something I like to do when a specific color is contained like that. Uh, in this case, it was just in the sky, and I think it worked beautifully. Now, the other thing about accenting uh, certain areas, which I now want to add a little bit of accent to that foreground, is with detail. And so I'm going to go into structure. I'm going to get a linear gradient and do something similar where I want to create a little bit more umph. Uh, um, very technical term there, but I want to create a little bit more umph around uh, the street and also Big Ben. So I'm going to start with a linear gradient. And what I want to do is bump up that uh, structure about 30 or so, so 36, let's call it. It gives a little bit of crunch there, again, highlighting kind of that section. But I want to add to that mask. And so if you didn't know this, this is something to be aware of. I've already used a linear gradient in that bottom section, but I can now grab the brush and go add to it. I'm on paint, and I can just come in here and with the brush, come and paint on some of these areas where I want to add a little bit more emphasis as well, because adding structure, it does create that appearance of detail, but it also slightly brightens an area when you apply structure AI to it. So just know you can combine other masks with a brush mask in the same instance of masking and the same use of the tool. I just did that with Structure AI. I hope that was pretty easy to see. But there it is before, and there it is now. Where I got a little bit more crunch on the tower and the front of part of the Houses of Parliament as well as the street by combining the two masks in the same instance of Structure AI. And now I'm going to go back to color. And again, I consider this a local adjustment, even though it's uh, color. Uh, and that is, I want to go in and play a little bit more with some of these other colors. So I'm going to start in luminance, and so I'm going to take the luminance of the orange, and I'm going to bump that up mid-20s, maybe high-20s. I think that looks good at 29. I'm going to take the yellow, and I'm going to go a little bit more. I'm going to go into the low 50s here. And then with the green, also, there's that nice, beautiful streak of green uh, coming from that bus, and I want to bump that up a little bit. So that's going to go mid-30s, so, you know, 34. Now, if you look at the before... There it is before and the after. It's creating a little bit more emphasis on those streaks of light as well as on the uh, Big Ben and Houses of Parliament. And of course, I'm going to add a little bit of saturation to them as well. So a little bit of bump in the orange, a little bit of bump in the yellow, and a more significant bump in green because I like that green. It really sticks out, kind of stands out. In fact, I might go a little bit more with yellow and a little bit more with orange. All I'm trying to do is pop those colors, but... I want to point out that when you are accenting colors, don't accent every single color. Like I kind of, uh, I made the blue brighter, but I didn't play with the saturation. And I'm not playing with the reds. There's a little bit of red, including that uh, line right here, which actually might look pretty good if I highlighted that a little bit. I didn't plan that in this video, and I always think of things when I'm editing that would probably make the photo better. But that's an idea. Uh, but the point here was, don't accent or bump up or saturate is really the word uh, every color because it can get a little bit overwhelming and in that spirit I think I'm going to pull the orange and the yellow down slightly because I really want that green to pop um, but this is a local adjustment even though it's applying across the entire photo I'm calling it a local adjustment because I'm just playing with the individual color channels for a couple of these colors and even though those colors would be impacted across the entire image they're not present across the entire image so I think of it as a local adjustment, even though I'm not using any mask, as basically what I'm saying. There it is before this color adjustment, and there it is now. A little bit more pop, a little bit more emphasis. I think uh, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so we're coming pretty far. We've done global adjustments with a couple of tools. We did local adjustments for light, detail, and color, really. Uh, some with mask, some without. Uh, but that was global and then local. And one of the things I like to do, and this really works well for me, and I find that uh, this is a great way to really wrap up an edit, and that is to come back and do some global edits at the end. I will often just come back with develop, maybe add a little bit of contrast and be done, but I wanted to do a couple of things here because there's a few tools that I haven't used that I want to use and that I think have a nice impact on the photo. So the first one is Accent AI, which I always recommend taking it easy with. It can do a lot to a photo, and especially after uh, you've already done a bunch of edits like I have here, you don't want to just drag it and start going crazy because you'll get a kind of a, uh, a mess uh, if you're not careful. So I'm going to go global across the entire photo with that slider, but only at 15. So I like to take it easy. I will often, in fact, most of the time, I'll use Accent AI with a mask. In this case, I think it works fine across the entire photo. Gives it a little bit brighter look uh, and a little bit of pop without really going over the top. 
Next up, I'm gonna get one of my favorites, which is Mystical, and I'm just gonna go like mid-20s, like 25. And I love what that does to, uh, to a photo, especially a night shot. If you look at the before and the after, to me it creates a little bit softer glow, like the highlight areas get a little bit of pop, they jump out a little bit more, and I think the shadows get a little bit more shadowy and mysterious. I don't know, Mystical, I'm a big fan of. I've been using it ever since Luminar first came out, but I love it, and it's just this nice little subtle effect on a night shot. So there it is before, and there it is after applying Mystical. Now, the other thing I want to do is go back to develop, and this is something I normally do, as I said earlier, at the end of an edit, and that is I'll just come back and I'll just nudge a few of these sliders, uh, and that is just kind of just a light little bit around contrast, maybe highlights, maybe maybe uh, shadows or blacks and whites, maybe a little bit of color or temperature and tint, maybe some of those things. It's really just generally speaking a, a touch-up, kind of finalizing edit, and it's a little bit of just manipulating the image just to get what I want to get out of the photo basically. In this case I lifted the highlights a little bit. I'm bringing back a little bit of that white and I think that's looking pretty good. Uh, and then really the last thing is just a vignette. So I'm going to come in here and grab that and this is going to be you know maybe like a negative 25 or 30. Size can be kind of tight. Uh, I, I like feathering at 100. I'm going to choose a subject to be down here kind of at the bottom of the clock tower. Uh, so that that is the center of the vignette because I'm going to add a little bit of inner light, not too much, but it's going to brighten that area a little bit, which I think makes sense. If you look at it, all these lights are kind of converging there. There are street lights. There's going to be glow coming off of the clock from Big Ben and that sort of thing. So kind of having that a little bit brighter, I think, works for me. And also, of course, the vignette is going to darken the edges of the photo, which gives it a little bit, uh, in fact, I'm going a little bit harder here, a little bit heavier handed, uh, but it gives it a little bit more intimate feeling, which I, I kind of like to accentuate in my edits. So that was really global. Uh, is a couple of tools in the beginning. Local could be however, however many tools it takes to get the light and the color and the detail adjusted accordingly, uh, you know, to your taste and, of course, in the right places. And then generally speaking, at the end, it's one or two tools. In this case, it was four tools that were global. That was Accent AI, Mystical, Develop, and then, of course, uh, Vignette. But that's a, an approach that I think works on every image. doesn't matter where your skill level is. If you're a beginner, if you're intermediate, or you're advanced, taking a photo from there to there is not that hard. It just requires, I think, a simple approach applied with, uh, you know, mass and careful edits and that sort of thing, but basically global, local, global. It's a great way to kind of bookend a, uh, a image edit. It's uh, It just works for me. I've been doing it for years and I've talked about it here before, but as you can see, a very powerful impact on an image overall. It's not hard to do and frankly, I think it's a lot of fun. And every time I do it, I get great results and I'm always happy with it. So hope that gives you some ideas about the things that I was uh, you know, using on this photo and why. And uh, that's it, my friends. I'll be back soon with another video. You guys take care and until next time, adios.